Hey guys, Indiana Smith here, leaving behind the river bottoms and the relic room today and coming to the place where I work here at Greenville Christian School, where I've been the history teacher for the last 22 years. Now, let's step into my classroom and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I brought you guys here today because I want to tell you about one of the most unique and spectacular finds I've ever made. It's one of my more recent finds, and I just wanted to tell you the story of how I find it and explain a little bit about why it is so important. Now, I will tell you up front, I've collected artifacts for over 40 years now. This has been one of the worst years for arrowhead hunting ever. Normally, over the space of a year, I'll find between 100 and 150 whole pieces, maybe 300 in a really good year. As of the end of May this year, I had found fewer than 10 complete artifacts. Some of that was just lack of opportunity to hunt since I started doing book signing events every weekend. That's really cut into my arrowhead hunting time. Uh, and then some of it has been conditions. By the time school let out at the end of May, I was ready to go find something. So Memorial Day 2018, I made up my mind I was going to go to the river and not leave until I had a nice piece in my pocket to take home. And I had a feeling it was going to be a lucky hunt. As I was driving down to the river, I found a beautiful little king snake in the road, helped it across. Snakes always bring me good luck. I was going down to an old gravel ramp, which has been abandoned now. Used to be fairly easy access, but as you can see from the selfie that I took as I was climbing down the bank, it's pretty overgrown these days. So when I got down to the foot of the ramp, I looked around and was astonished that there were no fresh footprints anywhere. The river was mostly dried up. There were just little puddles of water everywhere with gravel bars in between, but conditions actually looked pretty good for me to find something. Now, hunting gravel bars is tedious work. You go back and forth and back and forth. Try to cover every square foot of ground with your eyes so that if there's something there, hopefully you'll see it. Now, about 30 minutes in, I found a little flint knife about that big, and you know that was nice. It was a solid piece. It was going to go in my case but I just had a feeling there was something better down there. So as I'm doing my pattern back and forth out the corner of my eye in an area I hadn't gotten to yet, I spotted a piece of white bone. Now, generally white bone means it's modern. It's probably somebody's cow that fell in the river and died and washed downstream. Uh, every now and then a little bit of ice age bone will still be bleached white, but most fossilized bone is either brown or black. But what caught my eye out of this piece just as I glanced at it was that it seemed to have an awfully neatly tapered point at the tip. So I decided as I made my pass back, I would look at it. So as I came back, I bent down for a closer look and that was when I lost it. Now normally I've got my cell phone camera pulled up and ready when I'm down on the river and when I see a nice piece, I'll take what we call an in situ photograph. That is, I'll snap a picture of it before I ever even pick it up so I have that memory of the moment preserved forever. However, what happened when I bent down to look at this bone piece, I saw that it actually had incising marks down here near the base and was tapered to a perfect point and I realized I had a very rare bone artifact. So at that point, I snatched it up and started doing my happy dance on the gravel bar without worrying about getting a picture. Now when I calmed down, I did get a couple of in-hand shots of it. But what makes this unique, this is as near as I can tell, a bone spearhead, okay? And all the spearheads we find in Texas are flint. Out in West Texas, they occasionally find metal points from the trade era, but to find a bone spearhead, that is exceedingly rare. They didn't make a lot of them, and bone generally rots. The other thing that's cool about this piece is the bone has actually started to fossilize. Uh, it is very heavy, it's partly mineralized, it's not flaking apart as most bone will do as it dries out. This is a remarkably well-preserved piece and I think it is a very old piece. Now, the weekend after I found this, I went down to the Temple Show, which is uh, at Temple, Texas. It's not held inside a temple, uh, but it is one of the largest artifact shows in the country and the largest artifact show in Texas. And I will tell you, this piece right here got more attention than anything in my frames, any of my flint points, any of my pottery, anything else, this piece just absorbed everybody because it is so very unusual. Most folks agreed with me that it was a spearhead because what I'm looking at is the cross hatching here 
is down in the hafting area. And there is a line that you can feel, although you can't really see it right here where you can see where it would have been wrapped around. And then this tapers to a neat point. The edges are far too dull for it to have been a knife blade. That wouldn't cut anything. But that tip at the end of a six foot spear thrown with an atlatl, that would definitely go through an animal's hide. And so I figure form following function, the only function that made sense of this piece for me was for it to be a bone spearhead. Now a couple of people tried to tell me that it was a piece that was for weaving leather cloth, uh, I believe a shuttlecock they called it. In that case they said it's probably woodland, that is a thousand years old or less, much much younger. Looking at the mineralization on the bone, I really feel this piece is very old and the vast majority of the collectors who looked at it thought that it was in fact Paleo-Indian and possibly Clovis era. That would put it all the way back around 13,000 years ago. The only way to be 100% sure would be to carbon date the piece. The problem with that is to carbon date it, they would actually have to remove and destroy a small sample of the bone. And I hate to see such a beautiful and perfect artifact damage like that. So I don't know if I'm going to get it carbon dated or not, but I've let several people study it. I'm taking it to another show tomorrow. It is truly one of the rarest and most unique artifacts that I have ever found in over 40 years of collecting. So this is definitely my find of the year, probably my find of the decade. And I was very, very thrilled to see it laying on the gravel bar that morning. So, check out my channel. Remember, like, share, subscribe, the three magic words, and please check out my books at my website, www.lewisbensmith.com, or go find them on Amazon. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back in the next episode.